Hey, what's up, everyone? I'm here with Chris Greenwood, aka Manifest, to talk about how to grow your fan base and make money as an artist. Chris, how you doing, man? Doing really good, man. Feeling good. It's hot outside, so it's nice to be working on music in an air-conditioned house. For sure, dude. I'm glad you could uh, show up and, and come on my channel here. For sure. Um, yeah, so basically, you know, for everyone watching here, I know that you guys are watching this channel for mixing advice mainly, but a lot of you guys are producing and releasing your own music, like your own band. Um, and I can show you how to get great mixes, but I'm definitely not an artist or an expert in terms of that next step of releasing it, growing a fan base, getting streams, all that stuff. And, you know, Chris is a very successful independent artist. He's got a million monthly listeners on Spotify, steward the world, released a lot of music. Um, Chris, I know you're a humble guy, man, but give us some more stats and context about, you know, who you are and, and what you do. Yeah. So I've released, I guess, about 14 or 15 albums. Um, I'm definitely not a guy about trying to release quantity. I always want it to be quality. Um, I did a, a bunch of, I did two indie albums, got signed to a licensing deal. <laughs> we did, I think, about four records under that system, um, which is fine. But I I always realized that, you know, the label is not my end all be all. They're just a partner, right? They're they're a partner. But if I really wanted to move my career forward, I had to be working. I had to learn how to market. I had to learn how to sell. But one thing, and this is kind of going back a little more old school, but distribution, physical CDs were always really important. They still sell to this day. But one thing I, I appreciated about the label system back then was distribution through EMI. And so that did get me into some catalogs, international catalogs like Japan. And, um, you know, at a really dark time when things weren't going as well as I wanted them to. And I was honestly thinking about chucking the whole thing in and just saying, forget it, you know, go back to my comfy office computer job and be close to my wife every night. Um, and then all of a sudden we started selling 10,000 albums a week in Japan. And uh, the label tried to sign and take my publishing and sign me to a full deal because you got to understand there's a difference between a licensing deal and a full deal. And thank God my lawyer or just the offer the label made was a licensing deal. So that means they had rights to my record for a certain amount of years. And then I got my babies back. And so they're trying to sign me to a full deal. But I was like, oh, I don't know, man. And uh, I ended up just emailing a bunch of booking agents uh, that handled Japan. And within about 48 hours, someone had not only responded to me, but started to try to set up a tour for me and my band all paid, went down there. Sold it out, made a ton of money, built relationships with EMI Japan directly, did a deal directly with them once the deal and cut out the middleman kind of thing. Um, and uh, that was a real blessing. Kept touring, kept releasing records, left the label system. Geez, 2014 was the last record I released with them. So eight years after, you know, and, and I've made more money from my music independently than you can imagine with a label, like not even, it's just not even a fraction comparison. And um, so now I, my majority is writing songs for myself, also TV film, collaborating with other artists. Um, Cause TV film can be a big, very lucrative uh, thing. And it's just a lot of fun. And uh, I really like collaborating with other artists that are a little bigger than me or about the same size and tap into their fan bases. Cause that's a very powerful free way to market your music and it's basically kind of like getting a a referral to their fan base and um one uh example i like to give is, is let's just imagine there's a pretty girl at a coffee shop let's just say starbucks because me and you were at starbucks together and you want to go talk to that girl <clears throat> and um who's going to have a better chance the guy that just walks up to her and just tries to introduce himself or if he goes and makes friends with her girlfriend and she introduces him and so there's a big thing with like collaborating, getting a referral and being introduced to people's fans and stuff like that is just a powerful way of marketing. And I really believe we are in the collaboration economy now, and that's working with other people. So sorry yeah. if I ranted for a bit. Well, that's yeah, there's a few interesting things there from like the label versus independent experience. Um, you know, one, one thing I want to ask you is, from the length of your career, like you've kind of been around since it was kind of the old music industry and you kind of were there when I guess things kind of fell apart, right? With streaming and like labels panicking and all that stuff. And then now kind of the rise of, of streaming and independent artists, like how do you see like 
the whole landscape right now in terms of the opportunity that's that's out there for artists. Yeah, and just to, because I did live, I know I look y- younger, but uh, you know, I did live in that model, and I remember when it was just you wanted to get signed, and you're just begging the ANRs to look at you and give you a shot, and and like that was not fun. Like that was literally the only way almost to kind of get your foot in the door and get in front of fans. And it was just these gatekeepers and whether they liked you or liked your personality or whatever, or just their, like what they personally liked. Like I remember this one A&R guy and the, the bands he ended up signing like flopped hard. Like I was, a gaz- I, I've been a gazillion times more successful than those artists, but he didn't give me the time of day. And maybe that's a good thing. It was a blessing in disguise. And that's sometimes what a lot of artists don't realize is like, you know, maybe something didn't happen, but I always like to believe sometimes things happen for a reason. Right. Um, but that was not fun. Only having that opportunity to, 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 to blow up that way with now we have TuneCore, DistroKid, CD Baby, where we can get our music out to everyone. We can leverage TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, and reach not just a local audience, but a global audience. Like, I got people, li- like, one of my songs is blowing up in China right now because all these influencers are using it in um, TikTok and YouTube. Like, They've got millions, like one has 65 million views on it. Wow. And my music video doesn't even have a million yet. Right. And so it, and so it's just like I'm getting all this free marketing and getting paid for that. And I'm doing nothing. And this is the power in the times that we're living in. Yeah, Mm. of course, there's more competition, but there's way more opportunity, I believe, than competition, in my opinion. Yeah. I agree, man. And that applies across the whole industry, I think. And I did a video about that recently, just a lot of, you know, obviously I'm talking mostly to producers and mixers and they often complain about, oh, there's no opportunity out there because everyone's recording themselves and whatever. I'm like, no, like that's why there's so much opportunity. Like everyone can make music and put it out there and succeed and independent artists are growing. It's kind of funny, like the whole label thing. I remember like, man, back when I was really hustling hard in the studio, I found the label projects were like the most frustrating because they always had like the shortest time frame and the least budget. And then I had to wait like months for them to send the check to get paid. Whereas independent artists, they'd pay the same amount of money or more. And they would just come to the studio and, and hand me the payment. So I think there's still this mentality, whether it's among musicians or producers, that it's just like, I got to get that label project or I've got to sign to this label. And it's like, I always tell guys, no, like, you can do have a great living just working with independent local artists, you know, and they're happy to pay and build their career because they're succeeding at it. Yeah, that's so true, man. Like, first thing, the talent, like there's like we're always looking for a good mix engineer, a good producer. And I I that's what I preach to my students is like, you know, sometimes we get caught up in the marketing, but really the song needs to be sounding amazing. And that mix is just so priceless. If a producer, you know, can (laughs) produce and make the song better, that is invaluable to take my little demo idea. And if you can put your secret sauce on it and make a hit, like that is just invaluable in my opinion. And it's funny you say that with uh, paying the producers or the engineers, like I always try to pay fast and on time and like, you know, I try to pay up front and all that stuff. Um, And I always say, to, to, to the guys I work with. Yeah. I pay you a lot faster than the label. Don't I? Um, <laughs> and, uh, even when I got an advance, which my wife told me not to resign this deal, I don't mind sharing now is a $60,000 advance, which seemed like a lot back then. And, uh, you know, you, you, you get that number, but then you realize, Oh shoot, you only get half of it. You know, you get half up front and then half when you turn the rest of the record in, you know? And mm-hmm. so what you think is this big thing you know, you're not even getting it all. So you're not getting that, like you sign seeing this number, but you don't actually feel the the hit of the big amount, right? And then it takes time and there's lots of other political things that kind of, you know, ruin that experience. Yeah. <laughs> well, when it comes to like artists releasing their own music on Spotify and whatever, like or trying to just grow their fan base in general, what's what are the big 
mistakes that you see people making over and over again. Well, you alluded to it, <clears throat> time frame, right? Just like how the labels are rushing out, uh, rushing you to get the project done and not loving on it and expect it to sound like an amazing record when, you know, vocals haven't been fully tuned and lined up and all that stuff mm. and, and want to bang in record. Um, a lot of artists want to whip their songs out there. It's like as soon as you give them the mix and the master, they're uploading it that same night and like need to get it out to the world. And it's just like, what is the rush? Mm. Like why, like, you know, artists don't plan to fail, but they fail to plan. And so they don't work with the end in mind. So you need to set a release date and work backwards and you need to do at least, at least two to three weeks for a single. And that's minimum. Like, what do you mean by that? Like, so if I have the master right now and I want to release a song as soon as possible, the, the, the least amount of time I would give right now is three weeks. So if we're recording this July 29th, or I want to upload it, I can't have that song come out to one, two till August 19th. Okay. And that's because, um, you need three weeks to, uh, like, well, you need a few days because when you upload it to your distributor, it takes at least 24 to 48 hours for it to show up in your Spotify dashboard. Okay. And inside of your Spotify artist dashboard, that's where you pitch it to the editorial playlists. That's where you pitch it or where, you know, once you've pitched it, then all your followers on Spotify will get notified. And like the power of the algorithm is just so powerful. Like Spotify's AI, the artificial intelligence, you want a trig to trigger that as much as possible. And you won't if you just whip it out there um, and don't pitch it to the playlist. You miss out on so many opportunities. One, n- not getting a playlist, but two, triggering the algorithm for all your fans and stuff. And then you wonder why you're not getting a good shot at it. Um, The second thing I always tell artists is you got to collab, man. Like we have a song coming out and it's actually me and two other artists. The producer's a brand, which that we should dive into that about artists, producers being a brand themselves and having followers on Spotify. Mm. But then there's also another female vocal on it. So all three of us are going to pitch the song from our artist dashboard inside spotify so we're getting three we're we're tripling our chances of getting editorial playlists plus my followers are all getting notified and both of theirs so that first day stream should be like boom right and you need to hit certain streaming numbers like i think it's fifteen thousand a month or something like that to even run a spotify marquee ad campaign um you need a certain amount of streams so that you can take advantage of like discover weekly and like you basically Spotify's AI needs enough data to know to who even to share the song with, like Mm. even to put it, like it needs to know like, Oh, this type of person is listening, this type of person. Oh, okay. Let's go drop this song in that person's discover weekly and that person, because they match who's been listening to your song. And um, a lot of uh, artists miss out on that opportunity. Like Spotify is, the greatest opportunity for artists in the 20th century to get get your music heard, but also get paid. Dude, okay. Like, so to me, it's like super interesting that you said that because how many articles or whatever have we seen of people complaining and saying like Spotify's ruined the music industry? You know, you get paid, I don't know, a tenth of a penny for a stream or what, like, whatever it is. Like, there's a lot of complaining out there about this. So, like, how, What's enabled you to have this mindset? You just said it's the greatest opportunity for artists. That's completely opposite of other things people have probably heard. Yeah. <clears throat> well, they pay me. I like my, the majority of the money I make is from Spotify, right? Like I remember when it was all iTunes and downloads. And honestly, like it's like 80 20 for me now. It's like 80%, mm. right? Like Spotify. And that's just because where people are listening, people don't want to download it anymore, they want to stream it. But to kind of give you an idea, when someone buys my CD five years ago, they paid me once for that. How many times have they listened to it? I don't know, hundreds of times if it's their favorite one. I never got paid again. But every every time someone listens to my song on Spotify, I get paid. It's way harder to share a CD. Like, you want to go back to the burning tapes or copying CDs and not getting paid at all? 
Like now you don't even have to get people to buy your music. You just got to get them to listen to it. But let alone that, if people start using your songs in these TikToks and Instagrams and YouTube, like you're getting paid. If, if you've got it monetized, you're making all this money. But like, you know, I, I kind of laugh at the artists that, you know, cry about these stream numbers or that it's they're not making enough. And it's just because they haven't marketed enough. They haven't pushed hard enough until they've broken through. Mm. They haven't had a hit yet. And I am not like some special artist or anything like that. You, They just need to, to market, collaborate, and get awareness of their song. And a lot of things I see artists do is they never stay on a song long enough. Right when they're done, and I get it, you want to get back into the studio and you want to create again. But you didn't promote it. You didn't really give it even a fair shot. Right. And, and you moved on to the next thing. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's interesting how you said producers are a brand too. And you're talking about collaborating. And I, I've kind of seen that too. Even mixers, I find like someone can become a really hot mixer um, within the industry. And then everyone wants that that guy to mix their record because it's like their name attached to it somehow gives them more visibility. So you're saying that that actually does matter, that having a certain producer's name on it can help your song? Big time. I can think of a lot of producers that have more monthly listeners than me. <clears throat> They've got a bigger brand as a producer than I do as an artist. Wow. Like it's incredible. Think about Timbaland. Think uh, about, uh, you know, even um, what's his name? Uh, who did the song Happy? Uh, Pharrell. Yeah. You know, Kanye was a producer first, believe it or not, right? Everybody wanted beats by Kanye. Yeah. Right. But then he d decided even to become his own brand, even on a whole nother level. Right. Uh, but like I, I could rifle off a lot more producers and it's just what they do is, is like the strategy is you produce the song, you find the artist, you split it 50, 50, you use the, like, like, like if I was a producer, I'd be looking for artists that have like 10,000 monthly listeners, a hundred thousand. Like, like if, if, if the producer's just starting and doesn't have any following, then find someone with 10, find someone with a hundred, say, look, I'll produce it, do everything, but you release it as a main artist. I'm going to release it as a main artist so that I can start growing mine and I'll produce the song for free. Mm -hmm. And we split it 50, 50. We both promote it and you start growing your brand and then find another artist and then find another artist um, is uh, the strategy. So are you saying the producer would have their own Spotify? like artist page? Like, how does that work? Yeah. They'd be, they'd just be there. Like, you know, like your artist page could be hardcore mixer. Or it could be Jordan, uh, your last name, which I'm not going to try and pronounce right now. <laughs> so I don't want to butcher it on uh, the interview, but like it could just be your name and that's your artist profile or your producer name, but you're releasing song. Like don't get caught up like that. A producer is an artist. You're just, your producer name is your artist name. Right. Right. Like, so I would set that up on my, on like, would you say tune core or whatever, like from the back end, And whenever, yeah. if I worked with an artist and they released a song, they, I'd never done this whole back end. So like, I'm a total noob with that. Like what's, so let's say like we collabed, we wrote a song or sending 50, 50, you're going to upload it to tune core. And then just in the back end there, you can kind of just link my artist profile to that is that how that works yeah you okay. normally do an ampersand an and sign and then you spell out the person's name and spotify and apple music will find it if not you can actually grab it manually <clears throat> and if it's your very first song or whatever and you haven't claimed your profile and all that stuff but you can do that with DistroKid or TuneCore, so it's all set up and registered and then now you're an artist you know okay. i would register your own distro kit account or TuneCore account because what's so good about DistroKid, and I know TuneCore will have it soon, is like the the splits. So you can just split the royalties 50-50 so it's paid out. And it's just so, so easy. Um, but uh, yeah, produce it's a mindset shift for producers, I think, to think of themselves as an artist and a brand. But like, if you can produce music, good music, and not just the music, but you can make a record. Like if you can finish a record... Like that, like to me, that's invaluable because I'm just a demo guy. Like I, I'm a top liner, as they call it, writing the ideas and getting it done. But I don't make the music, so I need someone to finish it off. 
Mm-hmm. And so if I can, like, and I'm either going to pay, I'm either going to pay, you know, whatever it is I pay, whatever the producer charges, or we're going to do a, a 50-50 deal and then there's no uh, exchange of money and then we both win. Right. And either way, you're willing to invest into that because like you said, it's like the core is the song. It has to be a good song. It also has to sound like a pro record. And so that sounds like that's your main focus in terms of kind of, and you're willing to invest into that, right? Yeah. Like I'll, I'll like I, right now I'm doing a lot of 50 fifties, which has been great. But, um, when it comes time to do a manifest record or a certain single, I, I, some, I would prefer just to pay and I want full rights and good thing on that because like, you got to remember the lifetime value of a song and some artists haven't been in the game or haven't made money, but you gotta understand, like I've got songs that don't know how many years old that are just starting to blow up now, or, mm. you know, how many years later, finally get a TV sync. And because I'm the one who paid for everything, well then, you know, he who risks the most gets the most reward as well too. So when it does pop off, right. Yeah. What do you think? Actually fun question here. What's the most lucrative thing you've ever done as an artist? Um, well, TV film, you know, $60,000 placement for a song that I wrote, whatever, later on. And I'm basically getting paid for my song to be, uh, to be promoted. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it doesn't get any better than that. And then I get to share with my friends, hey, I'm in this trailer. I'm in this thing. And it's just like, you know, that's awesome. Um, or just the song just taking off, like, like just, just popping off and I don't have to do anything like digitally. It's always the best $22,000 merch weekend. Ain't bad either though. Selling that in a, mm-hmm. in a, in just a couple of days, that amount, amount of merch right. is, uh, is always cool. So merch, TV, film, Spotify, I got, I know you're not touring now, but it's like playing live is another income stream. There's a lot of like, like you alluded to earlier, there's tons of opportunity out there today. I think that's is like obviously a blessing can also be like a distraction because like people are trying to do like a, a whole bunch of things at the same time. And so they don't make a lot of progress in any direction. So let's say like a small artist without much traction right now, like what is the one thing that they should focus on first? Songwriting getting a hit song because everything starts with the song, right? Like being a good songwriter, being a good performer, <clears throat> you know, knowing how to craft a hit, like a producer, you know, being able to produce a hit or work with producers, get 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 those chops because everything starts with the song, right? I'm not going to get brought into play if I don't have a good song. Right. You know, they're not going to buy merch unless I touched them with the song. TV film, now you want to be a good songwriter, But then you do need to learn what is like writing just songs for yourself or for fans is different than writing for TV film. And sometimes a lot of artists, including me, thought like, okay, yeah, I got a couple TV film placements with my songs that I didn't write for TV film, but people use them. And I I, I can't tell you how many times I said, oh, that'll be good for TV film. Oh, that'll be good. Never gets a placement. Right. And that's because it's a whole art and certain it's almost a genre in itself right um and obviously there's all kinds of stuff that you can be writing for whether it's trailers versus commercials versus you know different things regarding that video games and what what's necessary and it's you studying your market before you go over there like if i want to go and you know preach in China or something like that and tell people about the Bible or something like that. I'm going to go study China and understand before I just go in there. It's like, before you go to war, like learn about not your enemy, but learn about the market, learn, like educate yourself. Don't just flop around, like learn. Right. Mm -hmm. And I know that's why there's courses and there's trainings and different things like there's courses in mixing mastering. There's courses in songwriting. There's courses in TV and film and marketing your music. Mm-hmm. And like study it and and know your craft as you go in. It'll save you a lot of heartache. It just shorten your learning curve and get there faster, right? Absolutely, man. Well, speaking of that, I mean, I know you've been working with independent artists, helping them grow their fan base and everything. And I know you've got like a five five day free challenge for artists happening right now. Um, what's the deal with that? 
Yeah. So there, I have lots of books, audio books on Amazon, Audible, all that stuff. They can start there. Or once a month, I do it. It's actually, it's a paid challenge. It's a live challenge. It's five days straight. We just changed it. So the next one's going to be in August and it's all focused on Spotify. Each day we dive into a different uh, topic. Uh, first day will be like song release strategy. Second day, playlists. Third day, the algorithm. Uh, I think fourth day is really focusing on how to find collaborations. And then uh, five, we actually talk about Spotify ads and running Spotify ads to get your music out there. So it's it's so fun, especially when they get the VIP ticket, because then they can ask me questions directly each day for an hour over Zoom like this. And it's just we just finished it up. Uh, it's one of my favorite things to do. Uh, I, I do it once once a month right now. So, yeah, they want to go to 10xyourfanbase.com forward slash live challenge. They can uh, get info about that. Awesome, dude. That sounds super valuable. And I've been like, I've got some actionable takeaways from this conversation. So I really appreciate <laughs> it, man. And for all you guys watching, definitely check out um, Chris's channel at Smart Music Business on YouTube. Is that is it on podcast too? Yep. Yeah, podcast too. And follow him on Instagram manifest. Um, dude, thanks for coming on. Yeah. Thanks for having me, man. Cool. Talk to you later.